Okay, so having dealt with stages one, two and three and, and lots of separate areas really in stage three about the this area here, this bit of cloud here, how to deal with this bit of light coming through here. What you need to do now is really take a step back and look at the thing as a whole and think, okay, um, is it working? Does it look realistic in terms of have I captured that mood of the cloud correctly? Not in terms of have I got a faithful copy of the photographs, that's not necessarily what you're after. You are after getting the thing to work as a composition. So there are aspects to it that I'm pleased with, aspects I'm a bit doubtful on. Now one bit I'm a bit concerned about is this bit over here, for example. It seems to rise up too far there. I'm not happy with the way that moves through here. And the movement of the cloud through this bank here is a bit too solid. So the next step then is to really work over the, it as a whole piece and think, OK, how do I get this to be coherent? So I'm going to work in initially with this grey and start to lift some of the light through here. So I'm going to go along this edge of this cloud there and just break up slightly and take a section out of there so it looks like you've got a bit of cloud bank dropping down through here a little bit and capture that movement that I can see more on the photograph a little bit better. So I'm going to just use my finger again here and just drift along the surface and just circular movements not too heavy handed again, you don't want to end up with the whole thing looking just all one colour again, so keep that movement you had with the pastel there so I'm just breaking that up through there, I'm going to do the same thing down here, I'm going to take the same colour again, that pale grey and just break it up a little bit through here add a bit through here so I do a lot of this, I'm finishing off bits of work. I look at the thing as a whole and I take two or three shades, light, dark and so on, and I just apply it across the whole piece, it isn't just across one bit, to try and pull the whole thing together. So I'm just going to take that again up here, a bit more through there. And of course we've got this very dramatic patch of colour here, which works in the photograph, but I wonder if I need to add a bit more colour that's linking to that a little bit through here, just a little hint here and there, not a huge amount, just a bit, just so that the whole thing just pulls together slightly, because what works in the photograph isn't necessarily what works in a fine art piece, so it's not always the same. So just drifting on that surface there and just knock it in a bit. So I'm starting to get more of a three-dimensional feel here and less of a solid block of colour there, which I'm happier with. Now, Next thing now, I'm going to the same colour again, that pale grey, and just cut into that edge a bit there, and again just add a bit of movement through there. Drift along, and just soften that in, so it's slightly less heavy there. And then I'll do the same long here and take that pale grey through here, and just break up that cloud bank along that edge there. This time now I might use a shaper tool, I think, and just crisscross through, this is more of a focal area, rather than over here. So. I want to get a bit of movement on there, so I'm just breaking up a little bit through there. And then I'm going to do the same with some dark. So having done it with the paler, I'm going to get a darker tone on there. I'm going to use that darker purple, which is this one here, and then just not drop it in the white, if you can avoid that. Um, start to build up some areas of darker through here. So I'm using it quite lightly. I'm not pressing very hard. I'm using the flat of it, though. I'm just twisting, moving around, you've got my hammer wrist is moving a lot, I'm twisting back and forward, changing angle and direction. You can see quite clearly there how I've really sort of broken it up through there. And I'm going to use the shaper again, so I want that area to be not lost completely. If I use my finger it will disappear. And I do want to get some movement on that, so I'm just going to drift through there. And I'm pulling my shaper quite vigorously through it, flat but vigorously. So I'm getting some nice movement happening kind of through this area here. And then... I'm going to do the same in the dark a bit through here, just add a bit more of that darker tone through there. And again down through here, just slicing up through there to get a sense of some cloud banks there. And again, slicing up a bit through here. So by using two or three shades over the whole thing, though I have, you know, at some point used those, it still gives you a nice kind of cohesive feel to it. And just visually when you step back from it, it just helps pull the piece together. So just crisscrossing through that, just pulling it different directions and then down towards here so quite bold movements there as you can see with the shaper I'm not doing little circuit moves I'm doing quite big stripes and pulling through so I'm just pulling it around a bit there and that then just helps the whole piece 
just become a little bit more dynamic and a little bit less static. Now, what I'm going to do next then is just break up the edge of this cloud here so I feel it's a bit too big here. So I'm going to take my pale blue and just cut back in. So I'm drawing with the tip of the pastel now, I'm just cutting along here. I'm going to invent a few more breaks in the cloud here and a few more feathery edges just to make that slightly more dynamic there. So putting it on with the pale colour quite firmly and then we're going to blow, get the excess off and then just drift very lightly with the shape of here. I'm barely touching it really, just scraping through it. But I'm doing quite more, again, longer movements, not twiddly little details. I'm just pulling it to get that sort of more dramatic kind of movement on that there. And I'm going to, there's a patch of light coming through in the photograph actually here, which I hadn't really thought about until now. But you look at that patch there, do you see that there? And it sort of links to this bit here and helps break that mass up here. And it sort of cuts in a bit here. So let's just try and include that and see if it works. One of the fun things about pastel, of course, is you can put on things like that and add dramatic details. If it doesn't work, you can get a brush, you can dust it off and you can forget about it. <laughs> but it's just very flexible in those terms. It's really nice to work with. So a little patch of light there. Yeah, that's quite nice. I quite like that. And then I'm going to put a bit more of this pale turquoise down here. It may seem counterintuitive because it's near the sunset colours, but I just want to put a bit of that colour to appear elsewhere. This thing about applying the colour around the place that's so not just in one area is quite important because you want to get it to look as then visually coherent when you step back from it. So let's put a bit of that through here, just drifting it along. There we go. And then excess blown off, and then in we go with the shape. But again, this quite dynamic movement through there. Delicate but dynamic, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm not really pressing very hard. There's no weight on that, but I'm vigorously moving it. So it's very flat. I'm drifting along very flat to the surface. So don't be too heavy handed. Right, so that's now for me, it's starting to help pull the thing together a little bit. Especially with having some of this turquoise, this pale, pale blue, appearing elsewhere down here has helped tie those together, I think, for me. Okay, now I'm going to also use a bit of this paler colour and some of the orange tones along this area here just again to tie those clouds in with what's happening over here and what's happening down below. So I'm going to put a bit of that pale colour coming up into that turquoise sky and a bit of that quite much, that's probably too bold. I've just used this colour here which is what I use mainly up there Okay, now over here it worked fine with these dark colours around it, but with these pale colours next to it, it's just too harsh. If I lay it on there, perhaps you'll have to see how much it really stands out as being too dramatic. So let's take that off and let's go back to the much paler version of the same thing and just stick with that. That's just That works fairly well, but that other one was just too much for it. I'm going to try the pale pink instead and see if that works. Just a little, yeah, it's better. A little hint of it. And also that other one was just too orange and there's a lot of blue here. And when you add a lot of that orangey tone and you're going to get a brown so the pink is working better with that so I'm just breaking that blue edge there and just undoing all my hard work earlier on precise edges and just breaking it up again so you can just over layer and just you know adapt and make it work for you so I feel that works better having that interesting area here with what's what's going on down here so it's less on its own I'm going to take this pale pink, which I just used up here, and bring it through a little bit down here as well. Add a bit more light through this area here, and just break up some of these banks of cloud here with some movement through them. And I'm going to use the same pale pink, just a little bit through here, just to lift the cloud in this area. So we get a little bit of the suggestion of things moving through here. So I'm starting to really be a bit more uh, inventive here. So it's really not what I'm seeing in the picture. I'm just thinking about what's working on here. And I'm just going with the flow with that. And you just have to some, do that sometimes to make it work for you. It seems that, you know, you're sort of you're trying to capture that moment and the mood and the atmosphere and the weather. You know, this is a photograph I took and I was looking down the valley from the house and across to the distant hills of Kinder Scout and Rush of Edge. And you want to capture the, the, the wind in your face almost. You want to get that feel for how it was moving. It was moving very fast at the time. So I want to get that feeling and having breaking up a bit more I think helps. Now 
Having broken this edge up here, I need to break it up a little bit over here, I think, because it's just too heavy here. So let's put a bit of that turquoise blue in again and just imply that the cloud is breaking up on that edge there. So I'll use my finger because it's not a focal point. It doesn't need to be bold, it just needs to be a suggestion of the cloud loosening at that edge. So that's, again, making that less solid here, although that's still quite dark. But I do like the dark because it links to there. So it's a, it's a balancing act, isn't it? So let's go a bit more dark, <laughs> counterintuitively. Keep that blue and a bit more dark as well. And I'm going to go a bit more dark again. Let's put a bit more dark through here. There's more 3D I can put through here. It's a very tiny amount. I talked earlier about putting a bit on your finger and just literally getting your finger quite a dark colour and then just putting fingerprint marks on there to add a little bit of colour. So we can just see there's some nice fingerprint marks just there. So you can then blend those through and it's just a tiny subtle addition. I'm just putting a bit of that on there and again just Keeping it quite dynamic, not too static, just moving it across the surface. A bit more through here. Again, it helps tie things together. It's going to link when I bring in the, the landscape at the bottom as well. Okay, so just drifting a bit through there. Right, okay, so that makes that less on its own now and it's pulled it in with everything down here. Right, okay, so the it says dust off, let's see where we are at. Now, next step then I think is to think about what's happening down here in this bit of landscape here. So in the next stage, what I'm going to do is talk about horizon lines. Okay, so let's stop that one where we are now and then tune in the next one for working out what to do along here.